Sherrod Bond, welcome to the On Purpose Podcast, my friend. How are you today? I am fantastic. Thanks for having me. Oh, dude, I love when people say fantastic. That's my favorite way to answer that question. Like people say, good, I'm okay, I'm all right, but fantastic. That's the way. What makes you fantastic this morning? I would say, why not? <laughs> right? It's um, it's just be. Being being alive is always a great mo- a great reason to be fantastic. But you know, I tried to live my life, like you say, on purpose. Man, I, 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 you might be the most professional guest ever, Sherbon. We're already off on a good foot here. <laughs> That's um, awesome. Dude, I'm so excited to share your story. And I, as I was telling you off air, what captivated me was that that you came to the U.S. from Romania with like two hundred dollars. Uh-huh. And you just had a desire to leave, live the American dream, which I think is, is yep. noble. And I think many people around the world have that. And like immigration is a huge issue right now. We've got people coming to our borders trying to, to live an American dream. But beyond that, what, I, what really caught my eye was that you achieved it. You mm-hmm. had this success. And then you're like, wait a second, I don't have to be done dreaming. And yeah. now you that is that is well said. Wow, I took it from your stuff. You're doing it, my friend. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I that that is that is the right uh, the right thing you said. I you know, like I came here thinking that there there's this ideal American dream that everybody painted for me, and I just went with it, trying to trying to achieve it without really thinking. What is really my dream Ooh. and what I should be pursuing? Mm, I love it. All right, all right. We can't get we can't get too fast ahead of ourselves here, man. We got to slow this okay. down for you. All right. Um, you just went on a run. You said right before, before we're yep. airing, yeah. But you don't just get out of bed and start going. You got to warm that body up a little bit. Maybe a cup of coffee, some water. So I got to warm your brain up a little bit for us. We're gonna we're gonna do our warm up. Uh, Shutter Bond, are you ready for our warm up? Okay, let's do it. All yeah. Right. All right. I'm excited because I don't know where your answers are going to go. So this will be intriguing. Um, You are on a deserted island for the rest of your life and you get to eat one thing. What do you want to eat? Can it be a meal or does it have to be one one product? I'm down for the meal. I'm intrigued. Give me your meal. Uh, I would go, especially because I haven't had it yet. uh, It's still early morning. My oats, my what I call my super oats. Which um, is I I mix them oats with uh, some protein powder that makes it really chocolatey and flavorful. I put a banana in there. I put some nuts, some seeds. It's just all around balanced breakfast, and I've been eating that for eleven years every morning. <laughs> so I could still go on. Put me on an island, <laughs> give me that. I'm fine. Uh, you're very consistent, my friend. That is my superpower. <laughs> All right. Well, that leads us right to your next question. You get to have one superpower. Why do you want it? And what would you do with it? Mm. Uh, okay. I'm tossed between being uh, bulletproof, kind of like Superman, uh, being able to withstand anything, right? I, I think subconsciously everybody wants to have that superpower to not get uh, hurt. But then to be honest with you, I'd love the movie Limitless with the notion of just assimilating anything and everything and just retaining it. So oh, I, wow. I would say that that would be a preferred superpower. Okay. Nice. Favorite book. Ooh, favorite. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, I'm tossed between growth mindset, uh, mindset by Carol Dweck but I also love, and it's it's kind of switching in between, depending on where I'm at. It's uh, Sean Archer, The Happiness Advantage. Okay. That one has a lot of um, information and studies about the science of happiness. And it has been instrumental in my life to not be just okay when I wake up, to be fantastic. Oh, I love it. All right. I, I'm going to add that to my reading list because I've not read that one. What's it's an uh... awesome one. What's been your biggest takeaway from that? Like, what was it Uh, something that you read and you were like, okay, I got to put this into action? I mean, the biggest, the biggest, we might get into this a a little bit later, but, uh, you know, I I come from uh, 
a pessimistic family. You know, my parents lived in the communist era, so they didn't have a lot. And they've always been very careful and very pessimistic in everything that was happening in their life. And I just, that one just naturally incipted in my subconscious. So reading the book and understanding that there's a science behind just being joyful and happy every day it just boosts everything about it like your your thinking expands you're more prone to have good things happen in your life and that's the big takeaway is just happiness is a choice and it's a very beneficial one i love it all right you get to have dinner with one person they could have passed on or still be with us who do you want to have dinner with and what specifically would you want to ask them hmm uh, my first instinct was, I keep giving two answers. My first instinct was Tom Bilio, which is my mentor from afar. But to be honest with you, I would love to have dinner with Tony Robbins because he has a way of just sipping into people's fears and subconscious and pulling the best out of them. So I would love to have dinner with him and ask him how I can be better. Like, what are my blind spots that I don't see that I need to see and overcome? Wow, that's a good one. That's a good one. Now, would you offer him your super oat protein banana stuff for dinner or would you have a real meal? Oh, it, we would do breakfast, not dinner. Uh, it, <laughs> and he would love it. He would he love would. it because it's, it's very balanced. <laughs> it has all the fats, the carbs, the proteins. So. Oh, man. That would be a high energy meeting. I would love just to watch that one. Yeah, he is an intense guy, isn't he? <laughs> he is. Yeah, yeah. He he's intense, and you're right, man. He does a very, very good job of getting people to to step into their fears and to mm -hmm. to kind of get behind the veil that we put up for our lives at times and, and get to some truths. Yeah, yeah. We I I do think that we all have you know we we all feel powerful, but we all have our dark side, and uh, it's always good to be able to know how to tame that dark side. So I I think he would do a good job of uh, pulling that out of anybody. Well, I think you're on the right track to get better by asking how you can get better. Right, that's one yep. of the first things is recognizing that. Well, how you feeling, Shabon? You you warmed up? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, I yeah, love good it. questions. Yeah, yeah. yeah I I, honestly, it's one of my favorite parts because I kind of get to know know people and and that food I the food on the island always throws me off depending on what we get. I never know what's going to be asked. Yeah, I don't know if anybody said oats. <laughs> I'd have to go back. You know, we've been doing this almost five years, so I got a lot of answers. I don't. There may have been. Um, really, the the one that stands out to me the most is still my friend Scott Savage, who took agave so he could make tequila. That one. Oh. <laughs> that one, that one the the lifespan it might not be that long, but he would enjoy his stay on the island. Yeah. Well, you could run from your island to his island to party and then run back to your island. <laughs> we have just a bunch of islands and we, we just must. share. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we must. All right, Sherbon, I, I want to tell you it's an honor to bring your story to our community. And um thank you. I, I want to start with your decision to, to leave Romania and come to America. You hit on it a little bit. What was what was the basis for that? And what exactly was that American dream that you thought was possible when you made that choice? Yeah. I mean, the the primary reason in Romania when I was growing up, there weren't a lot of options. And and uh especially when growing up, we didn't have a lot of money. So that one was a big the reason why I wanted more money. Because that's the the bar the barometer that someone would gauge on their success, or at least that's what I thought. So coming to America and just working a day and making an income that I would make in Romania in a month was just mind blowing. Really, you know, I, went, <laughs> I went to the store and I'm like, wait, I can buy two pairs of jeans with what I how much I worked today and still have some extra whereas in Romania I would work a whole month to buy a pair of jeans and I'm like wow this is incredible wow what was so but you knew that information so you were like on the internet or 
word of mouth? Like, how did you know that, that, or was, was it media? How did you know that oh, Americans no. made so much more money? We, we, we had, uh, in Romania, we had a few people going to oh. America and living there for a while and then coming back and talking about how much money they made. And I said, okay, let me, let me just go and uh, see what this is all about and come in here and just, you know, the money aspect was great, but then just picturing, uh, a, a better future for myself compared to when I was in Romania, I couldn't envision anything greater than maybe having a, some kind of a job that would help me survive and come in here and knowing what the American dream is and being able to taste it. It kind of opened my eyes to the possibility and wow, I can make so much more of myself by by living here and working here that is just it was a it was a no-brainer i want to achieve that american dream oh i love it now did your parents come with you no no okay so what did they think when you told them you were leaving you know my one of the best thing because you you alluded to this uh at the beginning i did have two hundred dollars in my pocket when i came here but i also had a brother my brother was already here. <laughs> okay. You know, he was also the one who was telling me, okay, this is how much you can make here. Okay. So he offered me a mattress in his one bedroom apartment and said, okay, you can, you can live here until you get yourself on, on your feet. And, uh, you know, I came, I came here, lived here, worked until I was able to uh, contribute. Where was your brother at in the U S in what sense living? Yeah, yeah. What? Where did you, when you first came to the U.S.? What city did you go to? What town? Yeah, we, we're both in Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah. Oh, so we, you came straight to Phoenix. Straight here. Yep. It had to. It had to have been a weather shock for you too, right? From Romania to Phoenix. Oh yeah, and I came in the middle of the summer, so you. Can, I I can still <laughs> vividly imagine the doors of the the airport opening and the oven heat just hitting me in the face and i'm like what happened who's who left the who left the oven open yeah, yeah. it was it was surreal okay what was your first job when you came over what did you do to start earning money i worked uh, as a was it uh, it was more of a hands on technician type of job i studied electronics in uh, romania but i i came here and i was basically doing hand assembly on uh, in a manufacturing company so just started at the bottom they didn't give me any kind of engineering job I just to be honest with you I didn't work uh, a lot when I before coming here so that was the only thing I knew is how to you how to work with my hands so I was just assembling some medical equipment I love that you know what I love about that story is you you came over and you started like you said you started at the bottom yep Right. And I think sometimes in our world nowadays, we want to start at the top. We don't want to do the hard work of working up. We want to just come in and be like, no, you should know who I am. I should start at the top. No, I did not expect that. I mean, I, I knew in Romania, uh, you know, one of the, the benefits of living in a harsher environment is the fact that uh, I would not shy away from work. So being being in that manufacturing plant, having AC, and having a chair, it was way better than in Romania. Um, I worked a lot on 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 the farm, helping my potato my my potatoes, helping my <laughs> parents farm potatoes. Right. So I was I was not I was not afraid of of uh, work, and that was actually very for me. It was amazing work compared to what I was used to. I love that perspective. What did your parents think when you decided to leave? Yeah, they had mixed emotions. Uh, on uh, on one hand, they were very sad for me not being there. But then uh, my my mom always encouraged uh, to for me and my brother to be to be together. So that was that was a hard choice that even they accepted that it's it's better for us to be together, even though they they feel sad now that we're we're so far away. Sure, do you get to go back and visit? I'll be going there in two weeks. Okay. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. So, so talk me through, so you come to America, you, you're working, you're building your way up. What, what was the vision of that American dream? When you came over here, what did you think was like, okay, when I reached this, I have met it. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it's, it's very much, I don't know if this applies to you, but for, for me, it was uh, just influences of what I saw in movies, what, how I saw my parents grow up and what I had my friends tell me and that American dream composed of being a house, uh, a a house owner, uh, having a corporate job, you know, with a badge and an ID, uh, being able to save for retirement and just go on two vacations a, a year. That was the the dream that I understood from all these external factors. And that's what I was shooting for. And you achieved it. In in a long enough timeline, I did. Yeah. After after about seven, eight years, I've I've achieved all that. Yeah. And, and what was that feeling once you got it? So you so, so you come over, you're living on your brother's couch, you're you're working at like you said at the bottom coming up. And then within eight years, you achieve the American dream. You have a house. You have an ID that you get to scan in and out. You get to work crazy hours to take two vacations a year. And then what? Yeah. I mean, I can tell you that for a few years, I was very proud and content with being there. I felt like I arrived. I felt like this is it. This is uh, where what I was shooting for all my life. I've I've made it. I don't need anything else and that was that was that idea was there for a few for a few years until things started to erode slowly that it just it started things started to feel a little un unright I don't know if that's a word but it just yeah. didn't feel right What was that what what caused that feel? was there a moment do you remember waking up one day and thinking like wait a second this can't be what I thought it was or was it an influence or did you get around a new group of people what brought that to light it was a slow drip to be honest it just it just slowly as the as the days went by and just looking back at the weeks and be, not being being able to recognize it it was just felt felt like i was on autopilot everything started to look the same to feel the same there was ultimately now i recognize that there was no additional growth intentional growth in my life it was just i i had i hit this plateau this complacency level and it just did not feel right interesting so you you eight years in you get to a point where you're stagnant that's what we'd call it right no growth we're just kind of going through what was the first I know you, you had quite a few mentors and leadership groups that you joined and listened to. What was the first thing that made you decide you need to start dreaming again? Well, I can tell you there was it was a growing frustration. It was just I, I just started feeling more and more uneasy. And uh, it is it is very bizarre where, you know, on the outside, things felt like they were great. Right. Everything was okay. You know, I had my health. I met my wife. I had the house. I I was saving for retirement. I was going on that vacation. If you look from the outside, it's like why there's nothing to complain about. But in inside, it just things just started feeling worse and worse. It was just this growing anxiety, till I got to a point where I'm like, there's has to be more, right? This this can't be it. And this is the point where I realized that, hey, for this, the longest time, I was chasing what I thought was America, the American dream, but that was something that everybody else put on me. Oh. And in that point, I started to ask, it's like, what is my dream? You know, what, what, what can I do that would make me full, feel my heart? That was the, the big question that I had that was making me uneasy. Like, is there something more to it? Yeah, no, I, I, I love that. And I love, I love when adults question their own mm -hmm. success, right? Cause just because we got success, we've achieved a certain thing. doesn't mean we can't think of something more, right? I think there's this, this imbalance of, well, I gotta be grateful. I love gratitude, right? Like I love mm -hmm. being grateful that, Sherbon and I both woke up this morning so we could have this conversation. I'm grateful. 
but it doesn't mean I can't have another dream of like, well, my, I want to meet him in person. I want to go on a run with him. I think, right. Like we can have more dreams. So what was the first dream or what was the first thing you said? Wait a second. This might make me feel like I'm alive again. What was that first mm -hmm. step you took? Yeah. To, to me, it ended up out of this growing frustration. It ended up having to search for a better answer of what exactly I want to be that dream. And it, it got me on a journey of self-discovery. And I, my wife was, was the catalyst for all of this, where she saw my struggle and my frustration and gently nudged me towards uh, personal development. She actually said, listen to this Lewis house and Les Brown podcast. And in there, you know, Les Brown is so eloquent of right. really tapping into your your subconscious and really making you think. And it got me thinking. And then in, in that at that point, I was so open for a change that I I gobble up everything that he said. So then I started going on this self-discovery. So it was a lot of self-reflection. It took me a lot of time to figure out what exactly it is that I want. But one of the big realization that came out of that is the fact that we as human beings, we thrive better when we're growing, when we're pursuing something. It may not, it doesn't have to be to reach for a million dollars or become a rock star, but we just don't do well if we're just flatlining, if we're stagnate, stagnating. And in that sense, I recognize that I have to compile whatever it is that my next dream would be and that's when I started going on this self-discovery like, what would I like to do for my future what would be a, a a valuable dream of mine I didn't know at that point but that self-discovery and that uh, deeper look and you know I I keep talking about the the fact that passion is not something that you find it's not something that you can look for at the bottom of the ocean or something hidden it's really at the bottom of your heart and that's what that self-discovery journey took me on for the first few years of this gr growing out of this frustration. Well, let's, let's stay on those first couple of years, right? Um, mm -hmm. As you're starting to work through passions and, and, and ideas of what's going to make you want to get out of bed every morning and live life to its fullest, what mm -hmm. were some of the first steps you took to create new habits that led you down that direction? Yeah, I I discovered the the idea of a growth mindset, uh, and this may be very common for common knowledge for others. For me, it was just revolutionary. Uh, the idea that our abilities are not fixed. When we say like, "Oh, I can't do that," it's really we're putting a, a fixed mindset, a limitation on ourselves. It's I don't want to do that versus I can do anything that I want to do in my life if I have a strong enough desire. And for me, growing up in Romania, I was always told to stay in my lane, to not rock the boat, you know, to just play as small as possible and just keep whatever I have. Is that that communist mentality that I, my first seven years of my life, my parents and I grew up in, that was ingrained in my subconscious. But this notion of a growth mindset saying that, hey, I know you've achieved these things and this is the plateau that you think you're going to get to. There's another level. And in that discovery, originally, I didn't believe it. I'm like, wait, okay. I can do more than this? I don't think so. But let me let me put it to a test. And I went on this first and foremost, I, I'm active, but I've never really pursued it in that sense. And the first thing that I did is to try out a growth mindset was I've always told myself that I am not a runner. I hate okay. running. Love it. And I'm like, well, let me put this growth mindset to a test. And then I went and run a few miles. And then I run a few more miles with the idea that in due time, if we want to get good at anything with practice and dedication, we can. Yes. So then I ran to the point where I signed up for a half marathon and did it. I ran a marathon and now I ran over four marathons. Nice. And that one just proved to me that, hey, yes, we can achieve more than we think we can. That limitation is something that we we inherited in our childhood, but it's we're not stuck to that. Oh man, I love it. 
I, I love it. And it's so funny to talk about running because I literally just did a video a couple of weeks ago after one of my runs. And I talked about I hate running. I literally don't like it. But I know if I don't like it, it's probably good for me. Right. And then I do it. And then afterwards, I'm like, oh, this is great. I do love mm -hmm. it. Here's something I find interesting, Shedbon. You came to the United States to create this American dream. So you had to be open to possibilities, mm -hmm. right? You, you, but even once you achieved it, then you shut down possibilities. Yes. Isn't that crazy that we do that to ourselves? Even though at one point in our life we're open, then we can close doors, sometimes even subconsciously. Yeah. I mean, those dreams, those dreams were set for up uh, from others. I, they weren't they weren't necessarily my dreams i just knew that those were those were the the mm. higher echelons that i could reach and i was i was believing in the fact that i can reach up until that point but then there was that limitation up until after that there's no way right yeah that's great so how did your circle take this because i i like asking this question so what i mean by the circle is your friends the people that are right mm -hmm. around you because a lot of times when we want more in our lives, it makes people around us uncomfortable. Yes. Very. How did your circle take it when you're like, wait a second, I want to do something different than what I'm doing right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, and it's, it's true. There, there was, as I began on this journey, there was quite a friction because I have a Romanian community that I hang out with and they're amazing people and kind-hearted and they're such a good great support group but i did notice that as time went by and i've diverged from this regular path to creating my own path that there they did not they did not understand it okay and it was it was difficult for me because that that was my tribe that was my group that's where i i hung out and when when that friction started to happen i i only had two choices is to stay in that tribe and just constantly have to explain myself on why am i doing this and not uh, not being understood or just separate myself so i I still I'm still part of the community but I r limit uh, myself on how much I share with them because they're not yet at that place where they they're they're on their different journey right and I have to uh, I have to respect that and uh, it's cool we hang out and we we talk about things that we've done in the past and it's great and I go on my own path and I I try to respect theirs and I'm hoping that they're starting to respect mine I, I love so let, let's explore that a little more when when you first realized that that you had to start putting filters up right um mm -hmm. <clears throat> i think sometimes we think we have to just cut people off if they're not all in with us and they can't belong and I, and I don't agree with that i think you have different levels of influence around you and people can be right. in some circles but maybe not super close anymore what were some of the the ideas you had or strategies you used to start changing that inner circle right if these people aren't believing how do i who do i replace them with mm -hmm. yeah yeah yeah. and i it, you're right that i had to create some kind of a, a barrier or a boundary between uh, what i'm now the journey that i'm on and where they're at and we still we still meet and we chit chat and we talk about things that are relevant to their world and we are still good friends uh, but I also have that other side that they might not be that excited about and I'm <laughs> building it and uh, lo loving it and living it. Uh, and that part I'm sharing it with another tribe, uh, a group of uh, a group of other friends that I, I circle my, I surround myself with. Yeah. And How'd you it, 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 to me, it's, it's more of a, we, we have different relationships with different people. Right at work, you have a certain relationship with uh, with your colleagues that is not the same as you would with your your spouse, right? So we have different levels of uh, friendships, and that's how I how I see it. What was was there a moment, a defining moment where you're like, okay, I'm on the right track? Because you know sometimes uh, we're not sure, right? We want more. We want more happiness, we, we, 
but we maybe don't know the right answer the first time. Maybe we try something and it doesn't work out. Maybe we try something and it doesn't work out. And then maybe it's the third thing we try that we're like, okay, this is actually it. Was there a moment or a process you worked through to find that path you wanted to go on? Yes, I, I do remember one moment and it's it's been a, a construction of getting to that moment because at at first I proved myself with running that I can do something more than I believe that I can. And then I, I figured, well, if that's the case, why don't I apply it in other areas? And one of the big areas that I struggled with all my life was my inability to properly communicate. Like I was shy and introverted to where... Um, even in a in a meeting with five people, I would choke. It would be mind wrecking to say my name and what my what I would do for work. And the next step that I that I moved on to is to overcome my fear of speaking in 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 public. And I, wow. I joined the I joined a Toastmaster yeah. group with a growth with a growth mindset idea. You know. Originally, I've joined, I think it was 2013, I joined the first time and I did a speech and I was so completely terrified. I had that fixed mindset that I said, this is not for me. I can't do this. I'm never going to be able to speak in front of audience and I'm okay with that. Yeah. And then I discovered the growth mindset, applying the running part of it. I'm like, okay, I guess with practice, being okay to be embarrassed at first and failing. Yeah. And in a long enough timeline, we can get better at it. And I joined Toastmaster the second time, and I've been on this journey to where I've better myself in communicating to the point where this is the moment where there's an international contest that uh, it's called that every club, they every year they have this uh, speeches that you do, and you go from club to area to uh, division to district and so on and so forth up until you you can even go international and i was at the area level so i passed my club uh, one there and then i'm at the area level and i give my speech there and it's it's a it, it was a good speech but the thing that changed that was the moment that i knew that this is something that i value is an older gentleman came up to me with some teary eyes okay telling me that my, his my speech moved him because he knows the sacrifices that he had to do for his daughter which is something that I was talking about in the speech and that my words had an impact and up until that point I've never thought that I could have that kind of power to change someone's um, thinking or being yeah. influenced in such a way that I can maybe help so that's the moment where I realized that this pain of mine that I there was of my inability to speak can turn into a passion. And that's the moment I decided I'm going to I'm going to go on this journey and see where it takes me. Very nice. Yeah, you, we a lot of times we minimize the power of our own stories and we think only other people have stories that are worth listening to. No. Yeah, there's there's a story in all of us. Yeah. And that's honestly one of the reasons I created this show is just to share stories of people I meet. And it's, that's amazing. Yeah. You never know what story you're going to tell. It's going to make a difference in somebody's life. So right. after, after you do that speech, what comes next? And you realize, okay, I'm on the right track here. Uh, after that, you know, it, it, when it comes to really building a dream is for me, it's more of that. The dream is always great, but a lot of people have a lot of dreams, but they don't do anything about them because it's so abstract and it takes an, you know, it, it may take an absurd amount of time. So I looked at it as like, I want to speak on stages and be able to help others uh, with uh, my idea of a growth mindset and sharing my story. And that's the, that's the goal. And then I'm right here where I'm still learning to put three, three, <laughs> three sentences together. Right. And then I broke it up and said, okay, what do I need to do? So this led me on a path of just being able to create my website and uh, join as many clubs as I can, where I get feedback and how I can get better, find mentors and put in a lot of hours on practicing on how I can communicate better. And it's just that growth mindset idea of on a long enough timeline, I can get better. This is this oh. is what I want to do. Yeah. And it's just going to take a long time. 
I think one of the keys you said there is uh, on a long enough timeline, giving yourself time to have the highs and the lows and the rebound from the lows, right? I think we're such an instantaneous world that, I, okay, I want to be a public speaker. I want to do it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And nothing worth having comes without the struggles. So do you think, is there part of you that thinks that your Romanian background and seeing the people around you that struggle that gives you that toughness to continue to push forward? I mean, one thing from my upbringing is the fact that I don't shy away from hard work that that has been instilled in me since a young age. Uh, that is, uh, I, I keep saying that consistency is my superpower. Yeah. And then I think we all have it. We just forget it. If we look back on things that we've done in our lives, most of us achieved a lot of things and we overcome a lot of struggles. Mm -hmm. But we we tend to forget and we tend to minimize those those achievements. And I look at them in my past and I've started to recognize a pattern of this was really hard that I had to come to America and revamp my life. And I didn't know how it was going to turn out, but it did turn out well. And But it took a lot of time and effort and energy. Achieving the American dream, again, was a, it was a, a challenge. Running that marathon, whatever it is in your past, we have that arsenal that uh, we, we can look back and say, yes, we've done this. And we can recognize a pattern, right? It took, it took some effort. It was boring at times. It was frustrating. It, we wanted to quit. We said, no, it's not us. We can't do this. Other people can do it. And all of those, their, their ammunition that kind of confirmed to me that it's all, it's all in this journey. It's all in this just continuously working towards that goal. And, and here's the thing. Many people focus so much on that finish line. They, they, they don't take the time to really embrace the fact of how much effort they're putting in every single day and that appreciation of the growth that they had to go through to get them to that finish line. You know, I, I'm remembering the first marathon that I ran. It was, I was just wanting to get to that finish line. Like all I can think of is finish line, finish line, finish line. And I was so happy when it was done. I'm like, I'm never running ever again. This is too much work. This is just too brutal. And that, that high lasted for maybe two to three weeks. And I was thinking, wow, all that work, because it takes um, six, seven, yeah. eight months to get, get ready for a marathon, all that work and for two weeks. So the second time around when I ran, every week when I ran, I was just grateful and happy that I was able to put in an extra mile. And that's the difference. It's We've all heard this, right? It's all about the journey, not the destination. Yeah. But if you're really celebrating all the things that you do throughout your day, like going for a run in the morning, yeah. I'm yeah. celebrating that. For sure. And it just gives, it makes me feel fantastic because of it. Yeah. And that journey is the one that fuels me to get to that finish line. Yeah. And, and, you know, something you said here that I want to explore a little more is you talked about your successes. You talked about going back and looking at your successes, your, your immigration story, achieving the American dream, public speaking. I think too many times we want to dissect our losses. Right. Like something doesn't go right. We want to look, okay, why didn't this go right? But we don't give ourselves credit for all the good stuff we've done and give the same attention. Like you said, I started looking at these things and realized, okay, with long enough time and continuing to show up, I had success. So if I do that again, I could probably create success. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I mean, this is. This is again the the value of a growth mindset is the idea that we we tend to just whenever we're failing we're looking at all the things that went wrong right and we just we just stop there whereas in reality f f I don't look at it as a failure as being a bad thing it's just something didn't go wrong didn't go right and I have to readjust yep. and you move past the fact that oh this was bad and this was bad and you like what can I do better next time? Love it. 
and what what can I learn from this bad experience that would help me in the future to be better, to grow yeah. from it, to learn from it. And that's that's the challenge. You know, a lot of people just lay down when they when they fail and it's okay, you know, for the first few days, it, yeah. depending on how bad it was. But then taking stock of what exactly went wrong and how can I do this better? It's always it always helps us grow and move on and continue on the path to reaching whatever dream we have. Right. And I, I like you said, I, I love the fact that, OK, if I do this and I'm not I'm struggling. I can look back on my past successes and take that system I used mm -hmm. and try to apply it here, right? Like I know, okay, I wasn't good at running, but I kept showing up. Now I can run. So public speaking, oh, I'm not very good at it today. But if I keep showing up based on what I did with running, I know eventually I'll probably get pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Duplicate yeah. our successes. Is, is that simple as that? And it's, it, as simple as it is, it's very difficult too. And it, it, you know, it, it's it's creating the habits of getting yourself into that into that mindset of just apply these systems. Why do you think it's so difficult? It all depends on what stages we are in our lives. I, I do think that if, when I was chasing the American dream, I, I was very hungry to establish myself. And once I established myself, uh, I could have just relaxed and just be be complacent in that in that place and not and not fight for it. Um, and there's all different seasons in our lives. And sometimes when you're younger, you grind harder. But even when you grow, when you're in your 30s, 40s, 50s, you still have to be hungry. It may that hunger may not look like it was in the twenties, but yeah. it still has to have that hunger to grow and do something, something more than than stay complacent. But it's it's yeah, people just I, I I've heard my mentor say one time that um, we're how does it go? It's it's we're only able to change when the pain of staying the same is greater than the, the pain of change. Yeah. It's so hard for us to change, right? And and if we're not in in pain for change, then we just remain the same. Yeah. And I think I, I've heard that. And uh, I think one of the great things conversations like this can do and, and the spaces we fill and trying to reach out and inspire people to live those more purposeful lives is – Let's not wait till we get to pain to recognize, wait a second, it's okay for me to dream again. Mm -hmm. right, give yourself permission to dream. Just because I have dreams doesn't mean I'm not grateful for what I achieved. Doesn't mean I doesn't don't respect where I came from. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I want to exhaust every bit of talent I've ever had. I don't want to die knowing, man, if I'd have just tried one more thing, I might have really got this deal. Yep. Yes. That, that pursuit plus it's, it's what, what we were talking about at the beginning is dreams look different from every people from, ev from, for everyone. They just, they just look different. And the challenges that people don't really think about have that self-reflection on what is my dream. And that's, that's individual. For each person, that dream may may, be, may look different, right? You're traveling and you're living yeah. your dream. And your dream may be so different than other people's dreams. But the moment you know it and you live it and you pursue it, then you feel like you're living a fantastic life. Right. You know what else it does? Here's, here's the thing that I love. Your dream and my dream are different. They're supposed to be. But why do we have an energy? Why did our paths cross? Why, why are we here today? It's because we're both living dreams, mm -hmm. right? And when you step into living your dreams, and when you step into living life with a, a positive energy, and like you said, fantastic today, you attract other people that are living similarly, even though the mm -hmm. dreams are drastically different. Yes. And here's the other layer which I'm starting to recognize it more and more. And this is why we're here, right? We, 
I'm sharing with we're we're just chit chatting between us two, but in reality, our conversation hopefully will inspire someone to change. Mm. And that's the extra layer when it comes to pursuing a dream is to try to not to just live for yourself, but try to live to help others. And you're you're putting out this amazing podcast and you're trying with this information to give someone some hope to help them learn something new that they've they haven't they haven't learned before so you're helping someone else i want to i'm speaking on stages and doing seminars about burnout and help and ha happiness and uh, fulfillment again trying to help others and i think a bigger dream is the moment where we're not only looking for ourselves but we're trying to also help others and i think that's very well said, my friend. Very well said, and I and I agree. And I think if you go all the way back in this conversation we had, when you realized you had achieved the American dream, there's very little helping others in there, right? Buying a house, having a yard, going on two vacations. It's all about achieving things, mm -hmm. not making people better. Yes, yes, and it it goes back to what we were saying at the beginning. People, it's the simplest measure of success in today's day and age is wealth, is money. And that blinds us. And until we do that self-reflection and we are introspective and figuring out what is it, what it is that we love to do with our lives instead of what other people tell us we should measure our lives, until that point, we're, we're kind of lost. But when you know how much you need stuff-wise, because it's important, still right. it's important, right? I, I value security. That's why I have my home and I live in my home and I have my, my job as a program manager. But beyond that, what is it that we want to do after we, uh, we achieve that financial, uh, that financial security? Yeah, fantastic. Sherban, where can our community follow you and where can they you know, get more information on your story and be part of your community. Yeah, they can, they can go on Instagram, uh, Sherban Mare, uh, S-E-R-B-A-N-M-A-R-E. That's my, my Instagram handle. And my website is the same, S-E-R-B-A-N-M-A-R-E.com. Uh, they can, they can reach out to me either on Instagram or on my website and uh, we can, we can still continue this conversation. I love it. Sherban, it's been an honor to have you on the show, my friend. And it's, it's a humbling experience to, to be trusted to share people's stories with the world. And I can't thank you enough. Oh, thanks for allowing me to share my story. And uh, it, it, it was a, an honor and a great conversation. You, you have great questions. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, my friend.